Uh, well, September 5 is an account of the story of the ABC Sports Network who were there to cover the 1972 Munich Olympic Games. Uh, and they were doing it for the first time with satellite, uh, able to broadcast live across the globe. Really got to hand that to Tim Feldman, the director. He was just, a, you know, absolutely, he's, uh, you know, he's very, very kind of interested in design anyway, but he was obsessed with that the, the um, accuracy and authenticity. As a director, interested in cameras and technical equipment also, he is one of those directors that's really interested in that stuff. And it was just very, very important to him because it was real events and, and you know, hard events, it was important to him to be accurate. So he, I mean, they rebuilt the studio. They, they got pretty much all the equipment from strange collectors online. And, and that was, you know, almost a functioning studio. All the screens worked. I mean, none of the things that you norm normally happen. There was every switch worked. The, you know, there was nothing that didn't work. The phones. It was it was old stuff, but it didn't look old in there. You know, it was brand new at the time. I mean, I find that that side of it was kind of easy because it was a really great collaborative. You know, because filmmaking is just is just the most collaborative art form in the world, right? Everybody matters equally, and there's just tons of you. It's it's kind of a miracle anything ever works, right? It really sort of is. It's, it always seems like total chaos, but occasionally they come together, right? And so, it, but with a, a cast, especially one in you know pr predominantly one small hot location, it's got to get along, and you've got to be on the same page. And there's no. And that's a credit to the the director and the uh, people who cast it, you know, that, because there was no, there really literally wasn't room for egos, you know, I mean, you know, so, so, um, and we're, we're all similar actors who care about it being real and truthful and care about our characters, like, because they were real people. I mean, I care about characters like they're real people when they're not, you know, they, are, they have to be real to you, but when it is someone real, there's an extra sort of burden of duty of care, and, and, and I think we all felt that, and, 
got along. It, so it, it, strangely, whilst it's, it was quite an intense shoot concentration-wise, it, it felt easy in terms of the big stuff, like making it feel real. I just hope that they can learn something about people that, you know, are behind the scenes uh, and de dedicated their lives to this. And this was just, you know, their one probably life-changing, awful moment. But seeing how they, 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 they did their best with it, ordinary men, but extraordinary men uh, and women. And just I, that to me moves me, people doing their best, especially, you know, good old American. It feels very American to me in a way that, they, that you know, the, 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 the technology is state of the art. But at the end of the day, it's just guys trying to figure out how to do it. Did it go, was it was it was it wrong in the end? I can't I can't answer that, but I know they did their best, and it, it mattered to them, and it hurt them. Uh, so I hope that they feel that human element of this group that were caught up in something much bigger than they were. Sports journalists, yeah, it's everyday workers trying to do their job, and then uh, an event takes place that changes their course of their their job, their work, and their lives. So like. It's, it's different when you think you're going to work and you're just going to record and broadcast sports. I think it's a story about journalistic integrity and how people in positions to relay information and how they need to have integrity to be true. Well, actually, we wanted to create a, a kinetic experience uh, or a kinetic uh, a film and a riveting experience for the audience uh, to to feel right in the center of the the, the journalists who were experiencing uh, who were experiencing that uh, the same way. And that was uh, Tim's approach and uh, the DOP's approach, and it was shot with handheld camera all the way. And that helped my editing and 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 pacing uh, the film. But we equally um, uh, spent also a lot of time getting the emotional beats um, uh, on on the spot as well, because uh, it's it's just a, um, a terrible tragedy that happened. Uh, so the emotional beats were very crucial to the story uh, to, uh, as well. Equally than, than the nail-biting, clock-ticking uh, 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 sequences. I think they can look forward to a riveting experience, uh, a nail-biting journalistic thriller uh, based on uh, real events uh, and uh, high-stake uh, moral questions uh, that the uh, characters uh, faced back then and I think it's it's timely as well because um, that that was the very first time um, that uh, an act of terror had been broadcast live on television and uh, we all know what happened since. Uh, so I think uh, it's an entertaining experience but also like a thought-provoking experience. Yes, yeah, so September 5 is um, about the sports broadcasting team that was on the ground during the M Munich 72 Olympics. Uh, when the tragic hostage crisis unfolded, they had to pivot from telling, covering the Olympics and the sports element to covering news. It was the first time that a terrorist event or a traumatic event like that was shared globally in real time on live television. And a lot of questions about what's right, what's wrong, what are the, what's the responsibilities, what's not the responsibilities are, are questioned and discussed and presented in our film. Well, when you have great artists around you and a great production design team and people who are really motivated to get it right, uh, that helps in an enormous way. Our produ production designers were able to find old equipment that had long been forgotten. They were able to source it. They were able to get it working. They were able to build a set that was almost an exact recreation of the building that the ABC News team was in. And we were able to have machines and televisions that were actually working. So that made our job so much easier. And then on top of that, we had the actual footage from ABC. 
from the 72 Olympics. We had Jim McKay there. We had Howard Cassell there. I hope audiences walk away. I hope they have a thrilling time watching it, but I hope they walk away having questions about how we now consume media and, and what our responsibility is as, as viewers of, uh, of the news. Um, obviously, we live in very polarized times and the news media is a big part of that. Um, so, so I think going back to when the moment when things really changed is important in, in our understanding of where we're at now. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's this incredible story of these sports journalists who are sort of there to cover the Olympics live and suddenly found themselves in the middle of a real-time crisis report and you know, the story of how they had to pivot. It's a very immersive movie. We're kind of thrown right into the newsroom with them and have to navigate all of the ethical and moral decisions that they make along the way, you know, things that I think still impact all of us today as we, we watch and consume media. Listen, our cast is, you know, best in game. We, we have Peter, we have John, we have Leonie, we have Ben. What they managed to do in this movie without any showboating, but just playing these real authentic people navigating these circumstances is kind of beyond belief. I, you know, I think when you watch the movie, you come away feeling like together they were all the protagonists and um, they do such an incredible job of, of playing off of each other and, and not trying to upstage each other and just really going in for the kill. They're, they're an incredible team. This happened over 50 years ago, and there's certainly people that are still with us that remember that, but certainly not everyone, and, and most of us never have worked inside of a broadcast newsroom. So it was this incredible opportunity to really show exactly what it's like to be in that room with the real machines, bringing them all up to speed. Our production designer, Yulian, did an incredible job of recreating the original ABC Sports you know, control room and studio. Um, and it created this incredibly immersive environment, obviously for our actors to play in, but I think also as an audience member, you really find yourself immersed in that and feel like you're sitting right there, you know, in the control room, pushing the buttons and kind of making the decisions along with them. As a producer, I, I hope that audiences are entertained um, and then that we've told a really good story. You know, just as a human being, I hope that audiences are allowed to, to look at what happened, you know, in 1972 and, and reflect on the way that news stories are told and, and the way that we, you know, consume and, and perceive them to this day, you know, with technology ever evolving in the same way that it was then, we're still asking ourselves the same questions. In the beginning, when Tim came to me with that script, he told me to be very, very precise and he was so keen about authenticity and um, we researched for a very long time and we wanted to have it as real as possible. At the same time, I view my role as a designer to enhance the story, to support the emotional world of the character and also to make a world exciting and tangible. So it was quite difficult and exciting to find the right balance between fiction and reality and I think we nailed that quite good. I think if they watch September 5 they can feel a movie, they can feel history and they can sit there in first row and watch how an event evolves and they can mm, I would say it's not only about you know just watching a movie and seeing a story, but this is really about being, being there, going back in time, because this is what we try to create. It obviously stands and falls with the script. Um, I think the amount of research that went into, into making sure that every single thing was correct adds to it, and then it was... Um, the, the ensemble work very well together um, because you know you've, you've got a couple of the biggest speaking roles here tonight but um, I mean this like every single person in that room was very committed and very very good no matter whether or not they had text to say um, and I think that really adds to its big reason as for you know why, why there's so much tension in that room. Yeah, it's wonderful and intimidating because, you know, you're being asked to bring your top game. <laughs> if, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's great to have the first day on set and realise, oh, everyone's very good. I have to be very good if I don't want to stick out. Um, but it's also, yeah, it's very good. It's, it's, it's wonderful because um, there were lots of scenes, you know, we're always in that room together and I got to be in the room for some really fantastic acting. And there's always something to learn, especially from people like 
Peter Sarsgaard and John McGarr and also Ben Chaplin, you know, they're wonderful colleagues. Well, we have an amazing production designer, Julian Wagner, and um, him and Tim have worked together on Tim's films in the past. Um, Tim, with Julian, I mean, they, Julian just recreated that set one to one as it was back then, it's like that ABC studio. There is something about being in that tiny space with everyone. I'm not going to lie, the days were not particularly fun always. That was exhausting and, uh, you know, the days were long. But that did add to, I think, what maybe those people must have felt like over those 22 hours. We had a little bit of a taste of that. Um, but what Tim and also Marcos Ferdera, our DP, um, brought to that table was a sense of if no one sends them home they're not going to leave it's like a relentless thing of we're going to go again and again and we'll do it right and a little bit differently so they it's it's exhausting but really really good for a film like this i think audiences can look forward to a thriller um a film that is a declaration of love to the analog way of making TV back at the, in the days because there's a lot of details about you know how it was made um, and I think there's also something to be learned about that event happening and, um, and I think you can walk away with a couple questions that are to do with how do we consume news slash how do we create news and how do we change maybe the course of events by reporting on them. So I did a lot of research. I wanted to use some of the original lenses that were used back in the day. And we found like an old vintage lens that was made actually in Munich that they used to shoot the Olympics. And I, I sourced some of them on eBay. Like we modified them to shoot on our film cameras. Uh, and then we just we, we tried to capture this as if we were a documentary crew documenting, ha documenting what's happening in that control room and like follow the story wherever it takes us. It's like actually what, what our characters do in the film. Uh, yeah, Tim is such a visual director. It's like a pleasure to work with him. We, we started making films. We both went to film school in Munich, so we were very familiar with the Olympic Village, which is like a historic site. So we scouted it many times over the years and discussed uh, visual ideas how to how to capture this. And it's just a great collaboration. We shot like handheld. Even Tim would sometimes grab a camera. And I operated a whole film, like usually on bigger films I have operators, but here it was so intimate with the actors and it intuitively would follow whatever happened, like without a rehearsal, without marks. Instead of like traditionally we would say we set up a wide shot and we cut to go for close up and change the lighting, we wanted this immediacy and capture this tension. So we, we mastered everything as in single takes, always with the intention to tighten it up in editing. This is this look. This is really crazy. This is like a, a really um, like walking through a dream right now. This this journey of this movie is is beyond our wildest dreams, and we are very proud of that. I think they can sit right next to the journalists that day in that room and see how the um, how they had to decide like within seconds and 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 be there and feel that atmosphere. I think what's thrilling about it and what he makes thrilling are some of the issues that lie at the core of the movie which are about journalism and um, about the way that we take in these, these live crisis situations and what is the point of view that most accurately tells the story. It's at breakneck speed, the whole movie. Um, it's got just this incredible ensemble of actors that, um, you know, and Jim McKay. The real Jim McKay is in the movie playing himself, and I think in some ways what he says and the way that he says it is something that we can all think about. Well, if the movie is about getting to the truth of what's going on in the story, the collective story of our lives in history, then we needed to make the movie in as truthful a way as possible. And the documentary footage obviously kept us um, paying attention to that because we couldn't cut to the real thing and have it look like we were faking it. Um, all of this real equipment that he had from the period, much of it that worked, and um, also even the way that he designed the rooms, it was, it was all made to be a layup for actors. Tim is a very quietly intense guy. Um, 
He comes across as calm, but this man really, really burns with a desire to, to tell stories. Um, he would wake up in the morning and many mornings go swimming in the river, which had snow melt coming down off of it. And um, he, it, he got sick at one point during the movie. He directed over Zoom. Um, I mean, the guy, the guy is dedicated, as dedicated as they come. Yeah, in September 5, we tell the event of that tragic day in 72 in Munich. Um, but from a very distinctive perspective, it is a true story of a crew of sports television uh, broadcasters, of ABC Sports, that had to make the switch from reporting on the Olympics to reporting on this crisis uh, on this day in Munich. I think especially in today's world where everybody has a camera and a TV in their pocket, it is interesting and, and, and we have like, I would say, an ever-increasing thirst for 24-7 breaking news. I think it's uh, interesting to take a step back and see on how uh, more than 50 years ago a uh, tragic situation like this was for the first time covered in live television and hopefully it makes a reflect on questions about our own consumption news but also about the importance and impacts of, of uh, crisis reporting. Like, there's the, the, the real person Jeffrey Mason the, uh, who was actually with conversation like talking to him was actually one of the initial points for the project at all. And when we talked about him, about this dynamics that they had in the crew, he told us about this unique way they had together, or how they grew together in this during this crisis reporting. And this we wanted to have reflected in the casting. And I was I'm lucky enough to have been uh, that I could put together an incredibly talented cast in front of the camera. Uh, we shot the film in Munich. They came all over for that, ex except for Leonie, who was playing the German part. And it, working with them was, was uh, I was blessed to be, have that, these people in front of the camera. This has to be absolutely authentic, so it was incredibly important to us and to the production designer Julian R. Wagner and his team that all of these devices of that TV world back then and uh, that we can also give today's audience a feeling or an idea of how television was made back then, how they still had to pin little letters to make graphics, they had to pin little letters on a, on, a, on a blackboard so that they can then be uh, put on the picture. Um, and also it was crucial for us that we could include as much as possible from ABC's original footage. And that was important for two reasons. Once I wanted to have, uh, one was that I wanted to have partly original footage on these monitors. I wanted the cast to be able to look at real images so in a way the reality would blend with our, our, with our scenes. Um, but even more importantly is the human element of the host from back then, Jim McKay, who uh, was in this 22-hour marathon of broadcasting in this, that studio and reported to the audience at home and had this, as I think, unique blend of staying professional but also being empathetic with the situation. And it was essential for us that we could use this footage. And I uh, consider myself very lucky that uh, with the help of Jeffrey Mason and Sean McManus, the son, son of Jim McKay, we could make this possible. They can look forward to see a journalistic thriller, a movie about the importance, but the complexity and also the impacts of crisis reporting, and a movie that hopefully makes them reflect about our own comp.